Today we paint the Kingdom Death Regeneration Suit Pinup Model on Dungeon Craft. Kingdom Death Monster is probably the hottest fantasy board game right now, and it features a line of extraordinarily sculpted models. This one's called the Regeneration Suit Pinup Model, and I'm going to show you how to paint it today. I'm going to be using three brushes on this mini. On the top I have my cheap number one round synthetic brush that I do 90% of my painting with. Below it I have a number zero Windsor & Newton Series 7 Kalinsky Sable Hair Brush. I will use this for much of the face. Below that, I have a triple zero Windsor Newton, and I'm going to be using that for fine details such as eyeballs, eyebrows, eyelashes, that kind of thing. This is the model right out of the packaging. You want to soak it for a few days in lukewarm tap water and dish soap so you can get the grease off it. The molds are coated with this greasy substance to prevent the models from sticking. And that's what makes these mold lines, which you're going to carefully remove with an X-Acto knife. I also have this tool. It's a little sandpaper stick, and I use that to very gently remove all the mold lines. You have to be really careful because this model is very soft. All the Kingdom Death resin is very soft, and if you press too hard, you can cause visual scratches. The model comes in multiple pieces like many Kingdom Death models, so spend some time carefully gluing it with crazy glue. Then I remove this part of the foot. I'm going to take this Games Workshop skull and I'm going to use it as a base, carefully gluing it all together in place with more crazy glue. And I use these paint bottles to brace it overnight so it doesn't lean. Kingdom Death models have a lot of subtle detail that I didn't want to cover up. So instead I used Reaper Grey brush-on primer, adding a lot of water so it was the consistency of skim milk. And I let it dry thoroughly before applying any more paint. For the skin I combined rosy flesh with a little tan shadow, watering it down a lot. You really need to thin your paints, I can't stress that enough. I neglected to mention earlier, I applied this coat of flesh with the number one round synthetic brush, but I just moved very slowly. I combined Reaper True Blue and Misty Gray, and again, watered it down quite a bit, and that's the color I'm going to paint the suit. The result is going to be a kind of a sky blue color. The final bodysuit will be black, but the trick with black is, you don't just want to slap black paint on something. If I want something to be black, I'll start with a light blue or a purple or even a green base tone and then wash it black over it to give it this sort of subtle color variation. After it's dry for my next coat, I'm going to add a couple of drops of white and a lot of water. And this I'm going to apply to the raised area of the model. So the elbows, calves, shins, knees, shoulders, etc. you can see the subtle gradations of blue. For the next coat I add two more drops of white and then paint the raised areas again. And at this point the gradation is going to go so at the highest point it's almost totally white. Once the model is thoroughly dry, I'm going to shade it with Citadel's Drakenhof Nightshade, which is a deep blue wash. After giving it a good shake, I apply the wash liberally, wiping off the excess with the end of my brush once the whole thing is done. It's important to apply the wash quickly that way you get a consistent look, otherwise it could dry splotchy looking. When it dries it's going to look like this. 
it's now time to add some glazing. If you don't know what glazing is, it is a really thin coat of paint. Glaze medium really helps the paint flow without diluting it. A glaze is almost as thin as water. Again, you can see I'm hitting the higher parts of the model. Once the glaze medium is dry, I'm going to wash the model again, this time with Citadel's Nuln Oil, which is a black wash. I painted the hair with Reaper Basic Dirt. Now here comes the tough part, painting the face. For years I wondered how pro painters were able to paint the face, it being so small. The key I've discovered is using the right brush. I love using cheap brushes, but if you're going to paint face really detail like this, you're going to need expensive brushes like Winsor Newton Series 7. That's the only thing I use those brushes for, faces like this, and I'm going to be using a zero and a triple zero brush today. My camera can't focus in tight enough for me to show you my actual painting of the face. So what I've done is I've painted a picture of the face on my palette and I'm going to take you through the process step by step, interspersing it with pictures of the actual model. I paint under the eyebrow and on the sides of the cheeks and around the nose a very watered down tan shadow. This color between the top of the eye and the eyebrow will give the impression of her wearing eyeshadow. The shading on the cheeks will make her face look more narrow. Now here's how to paint eyebrows. I paint the eyebrow, the dark part, with a triple zero Kalinsky brush. Then I go back in with the tan shadow from the bottom, removing as much of the eyebrow as I can and shaping it the way I want. And that's stage one of the face. Next I blacken in the eye, shaping it with my number zero brush. And using my triple zero brush to paint the white. To paint the eyes, you have to go slowly. First, I use a downstroke and I just mark out where the eye is going to be. It first looks like a cat eye. Then I enlarge the eye, moving closer to the nose bridge. Pupils are never located in the center of the eye. They're closer to the nose bridge so the eyes can focus. Now I use my triple zero brush to shape the eye. Here I'm thickening the bottom, and if it becomes too thick, I can always wipe it away with tan shadow. By thickening the top line of the eye, I can give her a more feline-like, sultry appearance. I'm going to give her red lips, but it's a mistake to just use red right out of the bottle. You actually use mostly tan shadow with a drop of red in it. Then put a small circle of pure red on the bottom lip in the center. Add one or two tiny drops of white in the center and it will give the lips a glossy appearance. Finally, I highlight the nose bridge and the cheeks with just a small amount of high pigment maiden flesh. I mix basic dirt with Citadel's Baylor Brown for the highlights on the hair. I did not dry brush them. Instead, I painted each individual strand with a number zero brush. I'm gonna hit it with glaze medium one last time. I mix the medium with some Reaper Rainy Gray, continuing till it's pretty much the consistency of water. And one more time, I'm just going to highlight the raised areas and wash it yet again with Nuln Oil. I modified the model slightly by removing the improbable looking bone blade that's strapped to the wrist. I'm going to use this model to represent my wizard character, Angelique Malveaux, who appears in both my role-playing games and a series of short stories I've written. So I painted the blade straps gold to look like bracelets. I painted the base a dull brown for contrast. For the skull, I used Citadel's Agrax Earthshade Wash right over the gray primer. To seal the model, I used Tester's Dull Coat Spray, giving it two or three coats. And here's the model from all the different angles. And that is how to paint Kingdom Death's Regeneration Suit pinup model.
If you found this video helpful, indicate your approval by giving it a big thumbs up. If you have questions or comments, put them below and we'll respond as soon as possible. If you want to read fiction about Angelique Malveaux, you can go to swordsandsorcerymagazine.com and check out Gallows Dance in the September 2017 issue and Ex Libris in the September 2016 issue. If you'd like to see more cool painting videos and Dungeons and & Dragons stuff in general, subscribe to Dungeon Craft. And please share this video with your friends on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you can. This is Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the table. And may all your future roles be 20s.